and we're here to introduce our next guest for this week. Sometimes in life, the best things that happen are unexpected. And this is so true for our next guest. Looking forward to a new chapter, semi-retirement, moving to a new small community, led to new connections, new business ventures, and a complete pivot in his life, which has been nothing short of inspiring. Please join us in wel welcoming Tony Vanderberg. Woo! Let's get ready for our strongman competition. <laughs> this episode is being produced by the Ocean Junction Podcast Network. It's sponsored by OceanJunction.com. They have what you need for swimming in the pool, lake, and ocean. Uh, welcome, Tony, to the Gap. Yeah. Tony and I have known each other for quite a few years now. I uh, originally started as a trainer-client uh, relationship and sort of built into a friendship, and we stayed connected. Um, and I just thought maybe we could start, Tony. You had a fairly big pivot in your life a few years ago, and uh, maybe start from there and tell us a little bit about yourself and... Uh, where these new adventures have taken you well lisa that's an open-ended question like which pivot are you talking about <laughs> you know there's the five kids there's you know like which pivot <laughs> i'll assume that you're you're asking me about um uh, coming up to perth and and doing the gyms and getting involved with magnus and, and that sort yeah. of thing yeah um well it's interesting because you you know the background with with what we were doing in in beam so and you trained with me and that's always been kind of my my thing is you know fitness industry and 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 personal training and gym stuff but uh after the kids left we moved up here to sort of semi-retire and um it was sort of an interesting process because um i got involved with a doctor up here who had a gym but also had um a pt ptd ptsd program going on and of course, as Lisa knows, my, my son Walk was in the military in the British Royal Marines. So um, I got involved with her in helping do some work with the PTSD, uh, specifically training and mentorship and, and leadership sort of things, just based on, you know, my uh, appreciation for, for the military. Um, and she was having a little bit of issue operating her gym and then getting involved in this huge program, which is one of the best programs I've, I've ever seen and been being involved with. Um, so, of course, Walker was coming back from from Britain and, and Hayden had been involved, my oldest son, in, in uh, the gym business. So I said to her, you know what, um, we can take that that business over and, and help you out and sort of work with it. Uh, part of that was I had a bit of a template because, Lisa, you you know, Green's uncle, Ken Fowler. Yeah. Uh, we talked before Emery got sick about doing a, a gym franchise. So we'd done all the legwork on how to work and develop the gym. Uh, and it was a wonderful sort of situation because we came into Perth, a town of 6,000, you know, Grimsby of yore. And yeah. um, we took a gym from 160 members to 1,000 members, wow. which was fantastic. And this was the template that we were working with. And that led into some really interesting avenues because we met some people up here um, that had real connections in the fitness industry because they saw what we were doing. So that attracted some attention, you know, like a, a small town gym sort of developing into that and some pretty interesting people coming through the PTSD program. Um, so ultimately, I'll skip a few steps. I got involved with Magnus Veer Magnuson. Uh, who's now my business partner and very good friend, four-time world's strongest man. Uh, and we started to develop a training process based on his training um, in, from Iceland. Uh, he and John Paul Sigmerson, who was also a four-time world's strongest man, they had a, a specific process in training that was fundamental in the way it developed. And And part of my feeling with that was, that's what we need to return to, especially in my age group. You know, we all do triathlon or we do CrossFit or play volleyball or whatever have you. But once we get back to our age, doesn't matter our, our experience in the gym, we start to take shortcuts. 
could be based on injury, could be based on time, et cetera. So we went back to doing this thing. We called it the Yakable Strong Fit System. Yakable is the gym in, in Iceland uh, where these world championships came out of, where we go back to the fundamental lifts and we redo them based on form because the feeling is to be healthy, you need to be strong. And to be strong, you need to be healthy. So it was readdressing form. It was readdressing it through boot camps and certifications uh, and, and making it some fun. In fact, like as we run these boot camps, after each level, you have a competition. So you graduate on to the next level, which makes it exciting. But not missing out on the, on the fact that you're reestablishing fit and form. So right. people get stronger. So born out of that, we started to do these, these um, little events in the gym based on our, our training program. But Magnus for years has, has done um, events for disabled athletes, mm -hmm. which you know ties into what I was doing with the PTSD in the military, because a lot of them are, are ex-military. And Sheila, my, my daughter Emery, um, lost her leg to cancer when she was 16 years old. So she had an above knee amputation. And what was really insightful on, on watching her progress, Emery is just this incredible kid who does these phenomenal things. She's, she's taken, you know, for lack of better phraseology, the bull by the horns and, and established her life as uh, th this disability is her new ability. And it's a wonderful thing. It's helped certainly went with what I do with the PTSD, but mm -hmm. it made me understand um, because we all do it, there, there's, we're sincere and when we see somebody with a disability, but we don't know the story and we don't know, you know Emmy hates it when I say this, the sausage making yeah. behind it yeah. and the struggles that they have. Yeah. So here I am with Magnus who has this gravitas as you know, four time world's strongest man. He's uh, the official referee still for world's strongest man and all the Arnold festivals. Um, and he's doing this little, he's giving his time and his money uh, to help um, enthusiastically help promote uh, an event system for these athletes. So when I got into it, we decided, Magnus and I sat down after the first one and said, you know what, <clears throat> there's so much involved here for these athletes that we need to make this more of a world-class event. We need to offer more outreach for sponsorship, for understanding just from able-bodied. We need, we need it to be on the same stage, quite literally. Um, you know, we do, we do an event at the Arnold's in Columbus and we do one at the Arnold's in the UK. Um, so we've worked very hard to try and get that message across that these athletes train at the same world-class level as say, um, you know, half Thor Bjornsson or a Sarah Sigmund's daughter or Annie's Thor's daughter. Um, but, their training, their, their capacity for training never stops. They wake up in the morning and their struggles, you know, post-training or pre-training are different than an able-bodied athlete. Yeah, right. And so it's become our mission to, even during the pandemic, is to present this, this, um, these events as, as such, that we, we bring it into the mainstream of populace. Because uh, one of the things that happened with Emery, who Lisa grew up around the gym, right? And was a very yeah. active kid. Yeah. She went off to university and wanted to go to the gym, but felt intimidated because, and, and look, it, these preconceptions that we have as able-bodied people is we want to help and we, and we feel sorry and we, we kind of feel the pain at the moment, yeah. but we don't understand that it's ostracizing these, these, athletes or, or people that just want to be healthy and what better way to take the strain off all of our healthcare system than to and 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 bring these people back into the fold of society than to have them just feel normal in the gym and be fit yeah, yeah. so one of the things that we happened to do was at the arnold's in 2020 and the arnold's shield i don't know if you're familiar it's you know 400,000 people show up there oh i'm familiar um, yeah, yeah. Sure. And, I, and I know Annie Sigmund's daughter, all of those people are, yep. Yeah, yeah, it's, well, they're yeah. awesome athletes and, and even yeah. better people. And, and I think, you know, you guys with your 
triathlon experience and your training experience understand that through competition mm -hmm. we breed community yes and it's yep. wonderful like it's really nice. uh, i was in discussions with rogue on on the weekend and they talk about an ecosystem of fitness you know to sort of move away a little bit but bring things together to congeal it it's amazing the community that we we develop in that so in understanding that and dealing with magnus um what we're trying to do is and what we did in 2020 so i'll go back to that story you'll have to excuse me sheila i'm irish i go off on tangents <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't even been drinking yet. Just wait. <laughs> there might be a prize later. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> so uh, what we did is the pandemic was happening as we were heading down to the Arnolds. And we had two days for our our um, our event, our disabled strongman event. So it's, it's men and women. Um, but... Uh, so we had to make some concessions. And one of the things that they were trying to do, and look, we're two years removed from it, but remember how intimately um, devastating the, the thought of COVID was and, and yes. the, you know, what it had, the, the fear that people had of, of its spread. We're halfway down, we're in Erie, Pennsylvania, and I got a phone call from the promoters of the Arnolds and we've been talking back and forth and they didn't want to have our athletes compete because they were vulnerable people. Uh. Look, you know, I understand that. Yeah, and that's the perception. And it wasn't, it wasn't out of fear for the Arnolds necessarily or the business they were doing. They were genuinely afraid that because these athletes are disabled, that they're vulnerable. So right there, our mission changed that we want to show that these athletes are less vulnerable than able-bodied athletes. Yeah in every respect, especially mm -hmm. mentally. So we put a deal together, which was kind of an interesting deal. They, that we gave them a day, but we, and we, we set our event down. Uh, we made it a little bit more compressed four events and we were going to get it done in two and a half hours because that's all they were doing was events, no spectators, no exhibits. Um, so they asked us to do that and I said, okay, that's fine. But they do this process too. They do a record breakers. So, you know, and this year featured women, which was fantastic. Some things that just blow you away. There was, I'm going off on a tangent here. No, no, there was a girl, your tangent. Absolutely do your tangent. Yeah. <laughs> there was yeah. a girl from England. Her name's Chloe Brennan. Look her up. She's five foot six and 140 pounds. She set a world record by lifting the Dinny stones. One of the stones is 413 pounds, if I'm right. And the other one's 375 pounds. Wow. Off the wow. ground. Like these are legendary stones. She was the only athlete there to do it. Rebecca Roberts, who is six foot four and 320 pounds, the current world's strongest woman, couldn't move them. Donna Moore, a three time world's strongest woman, 200 pounds, fantastic shape, couldn't move them. This girl, properly coached, as Magnus said, came out and boom, at 140 pounds, she, lift, she lifted well over 700 pounds. Wow. And, you know, and rings too, these two stones that are completely off balance unbelievable okay so i have to ask just just around that so how like what's what's the technique like what should she literally like in my brain i'm just like she's walking up to these stones and just picking them up is that yeah, literally that, what it is it's just that's the interesting thing sheila that's been wonderful for me especially to be around magnus um and like i call him the grandfather of strength even the existing athletes the existing world's strongest men come up to him and ask him for advice mm -hmm. he's Firstly, he freely gives it. Uh, secondly, he understands that the sport is so important that he needs to give back. And he's exceptional. Um, he said as soon as he saw Chloe come up to those stones, he knew that she was well coached and she was going to lift them. And it's oh. all about the way she gripped it and the way she sort of straddled the stones, the position she put herself in. So it was a leverage thing. And then, of course, it's a grip strength. Right. And, and it was just phenomenal. If you get a chance, watch the watch the Rogue um, um, live stream and yeah. recording and see it because it's just incredible. You have to look it up. Just, just unbelievable. Yeah. So to get back on my track, if I can remember, <laughs> gotta be careful. I, I lose things too. This age deal. Um, <laughs> um, we managed to get a, a fellow by the name of Martin Ty to do a record breaker. He's the first disabled athlete ever in Arnold's history to do a record breaker. And he did a seated deadlift because he 
He was blown up in Afghanistan by an IED and lost the use of his legs. Oh. So he sits on a squat box and he pulls the weight from the floor, starts like this, rolls it, and then comes up to a full lockout. Okay. He did a world record of 550 kilos. What? Over 1,200 pounds. I was going to say 550 kilos? That's crazy. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And what Mind it blowing. Did, <laughs> yeah. And, and what it did, it wasn't, it was neat to read the comments afterwards because the discussion wasn't about like, wow, this disabled guy just did this thing. It was about the lift and about right. the weight. Right. So it humanized them through sport. Yes. It made people look beyond that this wonderful athlete is disabled, but it was more about the process and how he would train for that, how, how it differed from a natural from a normal deadlift or a mm. sumo deadlift, the weight, you know, itself being incredible. So this discussion, and that's what we want, is we, we're trying to do with the disabled athletes especially, is it to become about them as athlete, yeah. athletes, because we feel that that normalizes them in society too. Yes. We don't look at the disability, we look at the achievement. Right, the accomplishment. And there's no better way to do that than through sport. Because as we talked about earlier, that community comes together. And it's an amazing thing to watch and see, especially in, in fitness, yes. you know, where athletes and competitors support each other. Even your most, your most dire situation and your, and your most egregious you know, competitor, when, to, when the stuff hits the fan, they're there <laughs> to help you, whether you need shoes, whether you need you know, even just cheering. And support so this is our mission now with the disabled thing is we're trying to do that so that um we can help bring and highlight the fact that these are world-class individuals yeah. and that there's so many opportunities out there for us as a society to understand and and support disabled people not just athletes yes and fitness is a foundational thing in terms of health so what better way to do it? So our feeling is if we can draw more people into our sport by doing more events, we can also draw more people into the gym. Right. And we both know, or all of us know, what mm -hmm. that high is after a workout. You know, so, so it's not just the physical aspect of, of dis disabled people being healthy, but it's also the mental aspect. And we all know after being through the pandemic, the mental thing, holy cow. Just my liquor bills. <laughs> well, I was I was, was going to ask like how did, how did that impact um, you know these athletes during that um, during the pandemic? I mean, yeah. I, I'm thinking they've you know uh, probably enjoyed being part of um, this community, setting yeah. goals, being in the gym, yeah. and obviously and unfortunately. Uh, gyms, along with restaurants, uh, really yeah. suffered uh, during our uh, restrictions and lockdowns. So how, how, how did they make out through that? It was a struggle. You know, it, it absolutely was because um, all of those aspects that we were just discussing, from the physical to the mental aspect. And unfortunately, our governments, especially in the UK, where a lot of our UK athletes were um, you know, stuck in their houses. It, yes. it was basically a house arrest. They couldn't go out because they were vulnerable. And that's that's the thing that we need to change. Um, had lots of discussions and, and, and fruitful ones in many ways that have helped us sort of develop the, the reasoning behind how we're going to proceed forward. Uh, we're going to make the best out of the pandemic and, and the experiences we all had from that because there were some important ones that Really, it's like what I said about uh, Emmy being disabled. I didn't understand before. But then the mental aspects of what happened during the pandemic, and not just for the disabled athletes, but athletes in general or, or people in general with the gyms being closed, as you two both know, yeah. you know, not having that release, that physical and mental release during a time of, you know, uh, unrequited stress, like uh, it was hard. I had lots of discussions over those two years, uh, especially with, with the athletes, you know, being closed down, not being able to go to events, not being able to socialize. And what it did prove to me, though, is what I kind of thought the underlying aspect 
of how strong the community is. The fitness community is a wonderful thing. You know, we're all looked at, well, not me, I'm type AB, I'm Irish, but <laughs> we're, all looked at, we're all looked at as type A people that, you know, gym is life, da, 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 right? Yeah. But it is. Yeah. Agreed. It is, it is life. Yeah. 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 And, and, and it's a, it's a really good foundation, I think even more mentally than physically. Like the, the, the physical things turn over the years and, and, you know, we can only do so much more. Not everybody's like you, Lisa, who just gets stronger and crazier as they, <laughs> as they advance in age. But, you know, the actual, the community aspect of it is fundamental and, and very important. We notice that just in our little community here in Perth with the people coming to our gym, they missed the socialization. Yes. You know, and that yeah. mental health. It wasn't so much whether they were on the elliptical or whether they were deadlifting, didn't matter. It was being somewhere for that half hour, 45 minutes, hour, whatever have you, and being in a familial setting through fitness, that community and, and having, it offered sort of a mental humanity to it. And I think that's something I've learned through the last two years is there's a real humanity to fitness that's important. Um, we're lucky to be able to do it, to do it with some world-class disabled athletes, plus, you know, some world-class athletes now that we're doing these other events as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's interesting and it's heartening, you know, it makes you, it makes you feel very strongly that the achievement isn't the medals or the trophies or the finishing even. The achievement is the starting and the, and the consistency. Yeah. Yes. That's yeah. the achievement in fitness. Exactly. Um, you know, well, and having, you know, having, the, yeah, and having the competition, you know, to yeah. stay committed and stay consistent yeah. and work towards, you know, that goal. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, definitely, I agree with that in terms of I always find the win is in the journey. Yeah. Absolutely. Not, not in the result at the end necessarily, right? right? Because the journey is what creates the beauty of the results at the end. Yeah. And if you don't have that yeah. um, build up, that camaraderie, the the consistency, the work. Yeah. There won't be a result. So that's where the win is for me. Yeah. I agree with that completely, yeah. Sheila. I think that's well stated. You know, I, I, I think that's the essence of it. And I think, I think, you know, we're far more, understanding of that because of the past two years so mm -hmm. it makes the results of the past two years although difficult in many ways you know financially mentally um it it, it kind of made things raw again we we start to understand that some of those things that we thought mattered so much really don't we're, we're back to the essence of what fitness really is mm -hmm. um whether it's triathlon, whether it's strong men, or whether it's just going to the gym. Uh, it's, it's really an interesting time to be in. I think a good time. I think there's lots of opportunity, um, you know, in every respect, you know, personally and, and from the community in and of itself. It's a pretty cool time. But, so, so that's basically where we're going. Um, um, we're also busy with these other events. Uh, you know, we're dealing with some of the professional athletes too. We just put on the Magnus Classic in Iceland, which was yeah. And crazy. you went. You when was you went this winter? No. Yeah. So yeah. this was something we've been working on for prior to the pandemic. Okay. Uh, we wanted to get back to old time strongman, and we wanted to work through it from a natural standpoint. We wanted to um, recreate the legend and the atmosphere, not just big stadium shows where everybody goes and, you know, you don't know whether you're in Birmingham, England, or you're in Columbus, Ohio, or you're in Montreal. It's all the same stuff with the same events. So our plan was to do it in Iceland with natural stones and the natural scenery, you know, in the weather, kind of what where strongman really developed, you know, mm -hmm. moving these stones as a farmer or, you know, or, or feats of strength from the 1800s, that kind of thing, or even back to the origin, the origins of the Highland Games or, you know, World's Strongest Man. Mm -hmm. So it got put off and it got put off and it got put off. Finally, we had a window and we did it in November. Uh, we flew over to Iceland. 
Um, we had about six weeks to get this whole thing together. There was three days of competition, all outdoors in different locations. Um, we had some really high profile athletes, including Maxime Boudreau, who finished in eighth or Malstead, who was eighth, I think. So we had some really strong competitors and we did it in some absolutely amazing scenery, you know, and it was all natural stones and so on. And we were lucky to have a partner in Rogue Fitness Equipment um, that we live streamed it. So we took our crew over. This is something else that we're trying to develop. Um, and they put it on their platform. And we're now over organically 700,000 views. Wow. Oh, so wow. It, just, it turned out to be a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, event. We're doing it again this November. We're going to have a women's division this year. Which is going to be this year, which is going to be necessarily prepare for it because you're using you're using natural stones for most events, um, which is old time strongman, you know. So, um, and we're trying to, in the same token, with what we're doing with the disabled athletes, is we're trying to develop these tier two next generation athletes because we have some exciting athletes right now that are competing and they're fairly young, but they're, you know, they're not getting, they're not getting younger. <laughs> we want to have uh, a little bit of influence, especially from Magnus's standpoint uh, in developing this next tier of athletes uh, because they need to carry on what the community and the community and that we received were leave it to Magnus to bring in new talent, leave it to Magnus to bring back old time strongman and create that culture, you know, where the event is the show, the show is not the show and the athletes are the show. So that's what we've been working very hard at doing. And um, hopefully we have a partner in Rogue to do some, some more events, you know, worldwide and, and certainly in Canada. That's a, that's our plan. Yeah. It's exciting. That yeah, is it is exciting. Yeah. So what does the year ahead look like in the way of um, business plan, competitions? So um, we're 20, we're 20, Sheila Bean at the Arnold's, um, there was 150,000, 200,000 people walking around and everybody was so excited to be back there. You know, it's like, whew, this is awesome. So I think that bodes well. Yeah. But it's still a compressed year. You know, we only came out of lockdown, Lisa, what, the end of January. Yeah, yeah. So we're doing uh, we're doing a disabled competition in Iceland on May 7th. Okay. Um, Magnus has a uh, another competition in Iceland, end of May. Then we're doing the world's strongest disabled here in Perth at our new oh. place. Um, plus the, uh, we're working with Strongman Corporation Canada they're putting on an Ontario. They're putting on an Ontario rugby competition as well, which is super cool. Yeah, like, and it's not like wheelchair rugby. It's it's actual uh, athletes with disabilities on the full field. Uh, they're coached by um, one of the one of the girls was um, she was the coach of the women's Canada women's rugby team. Okay, developed this on her own. So we thought, what a you know what an opportunity to showcase that um we're hoping to do a few more disabled events we're, we're trying to build that up into a federation so we have distinct template for how these events are going to work uh and our hope is to do maybe six or six or six. We've got the arnold uk in september and then of course we have the magnus classic which we're going to be doing in November too, which uh, very exciting this year with the, having the women's division. It's just going to be fantastic. Um, hopefully, uh, we're going to have a full-time partner in, in Rogue. Okay. Um, they've been uh, really interested in our ideas. Uh, and of course, you know, from a mercenary standpoint, it makes a lot of sense for them to be associated with Magnus too. Um, he, he cuts a broad swath you know wherever he goes because yeah. not just not just from achievement and and that's the wonderful thing that's what i love about the guy is you 
guy is incredible. He, out of six times that he competed, he won four and <laughs> retired at 32 from World's Strongest Man. And the two he lost, he should have won. Um, but he continues to give back to the sport. And he does it, you know, until he met me, he sort of did it out of the goodness of his heart, which is real strength. And, and I think Rogue as a company, um, Katie and Bill Henninger started it. Uh, that's their mission too. They become a big corporate behemoth in the fitness industry, but they give back and their interest is the athletes and the function of the sport first, and then the product secondly. And then the product secondly. As a partner for all the events that we're doing. We're doing. These events, again, giving these athletes a platform. Yeah. You know, like that's the importance. Um, and we'll see how 2022 works out. Um, moving forward, 2023, we're going to be doing some, we'll be licensing out the Magnus Classic. We'll be doing Magnus Classic Scotland, I Ireland, uh, here in Canada. Um, wow. and we're hoping to have some um, heats and sort of qualifier competitions as well. Again, you know, with Rogue's help, uh, because we want to, showcase these athletes so we're hoping that that, that works out but uh, 2022 is going to be interesting uh, if all goes well and we're if all goes well and we're how um how do people go about um coming to watch some of these events uh, especially here like in perth or around the area um yeah. are you live streaming them for those that can't come or yes, or, um, yes. Yeah, we've just we've just started up a, a live streaming company, Sheila. Uh, we've been working on that for a little while. That that was sort of born out of necessity because we we started to do our classes at the gym during the first part of the lockdown. We thought, like everybody else, hey, let's get on Zoom, let's do all this stuff, and then we sort of backed off from it because that didn't really give the essence of what people were missing from the gym. But we liked the idea of idea of because we, we don't charge we don't charge for the live stream we don't charge for attendance uh, we like that I think people get more from it if it's organic you know mm -hmm. if they feel like I've always said and Lisa's heard me say this before our gym's called Industry Fitness Perth and our other gym is called Yakable Strong Fit but that's not what we want our members to call it. we want our members to call it my gym yeah you know so we feel that you get that familial contact and connect yeah. and especially important i think with the with the uh, disabled athletes where people own it if you don't charge them like there's lots yeah. of ways to make money and we're not doing this out of the goodness of our heart we're not doing this out of the goodness of our heart that away because that's that's the essence of who we are as a company mm -hmm. and magnus is as an athlete um, and a reward is ultimately, you know, expanding the business in terms of support for the athletes, especially on the disabled side and the military side um, and the giving back. And, and we think, you know, it, it's a symbiotic relationship. So um, people can, Sheila, they can watch on the live stream through Rogue or they can watch through our, our websites um, and just attend, you know, like what was wonderful about Iceland is we're in all these tourist areas, like we're at Geyser, you know, with, and uh, the waterfall, and uh, the waterfall medley there. Um, and then uh, we're at the uh, the summit house where Gorbachev and Reagan had their summit, you know, so people are going there, they're tourists. And then they show up and there's Magnus Rear Magnuson, you know, and all these athletes doing these, doing these events. And it was just so cool. Yeah. Because every one of their faces, they were blown away by the fact that this was happening in this place that gave off this sort of Icelandic, especially yeah. atmosphere, this sort of legendary atmosphere. Yeah. And then they also felt like they found this thing. Yeah. You know, here I am. I'm on this trip to Iceland. You should see what I found. Yeah. Which is cool because they take that back home and it doesn't yeah. go away rather yeah. than, you know, anteing up 10 bucks for a live stream. Yeah. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it. Yeah.
organic feel of it. And, and, and we think that that's really important to have. And, you know, but like up here for the world's strongest disabled, uh, we're hoping to do some seminars at our new spot, Lisa, okay. and uh, have some of the athletes, especially the disabled athletes, speak to their uh, training, their lives, you know, and we're not going to charge for that either. Because again, I um, think it's important that people have ownership in their participation. Yeah. Even the spectators. Mm -hmm. That's how we grow the sport. That's how we get our messages across for the disabled athletes, especially. So we're, we're, we're doing that and we're going to try and do that. And we're always try and do that. And we're always mercenary. <laughs> I'll return my Guinness cans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, Lisa and I'd love to, when you have your, especially your, your local competition things mm -hmm. um, set up in dates, you know, we'd yeah. love to promote that, especially on our, our Instagram Absolutely. and things like that. I was going to say, yeah. yeah. And even maybe, um, you know, through the year and, and some of yeah. these competitions mm -hmm. connect yeah. maybe um, with yourself and some athletes yeah. and, share their stories. Um, yeah, yeah. I think it's so meaningful and yeah. I love that, um, you know, there's plans to expand on it. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, having shared some of, um, your family and, and um, your family and, and the way that you have, but starting to understand some of that's a good thing. <laughs> yes. But you know, the little things that you do with everything like, you're just visiting. Man, we don't have enough mugs. Every mug was and it was all over the house. <laughs> but, yeah, no. Yeah. But she, uh, she too has a great spirit, and yeah. Uh, yeah. I would love to. I'd love to do that. You know, like okay. uh, for us, any any format and any participation, especially from athletes like you two, is important because you understand completely what we're trying to do and where it comes from, and and that's that's important. That's important in getting the message across. For all of us, you know, for all of us. Definitely. Uh, if, Definitely. Uh, if, and uh, that's the premise of what we're trying to do is uh, we want the athletes to advocate for us and we want to advocate for the, the athletes. Yeah. That's community. That's humanity. And that's, that's, I think, sport is, especially coming out of the pandemic, is an important way to do that and an easy way. Because yeah. we all understand sport. You know. Exactly. We it's do. okay to understand it from a different perspective, too. And yeah, uh, well, I think that that's what we're all trying to do, right? For sure. And I'd like to, I, you know, I'd like to see a lot more of this, you know, organically start to happen within uh, gyms and yeah, yeah. other sports. Um, I know in triathlon, um, triathlon, um, and yeah. that's so inspiring um you know and i think that's just so incredible um but i think you know um we need to see more of it um yeah. across mm -hmm. all sports and yep. everywhere new facilities right yeah i agree 100 mm -hmm. what's amazing about that that was a lesson that i learned in dealing with the athletes here and a little bit with emory is they're equally inspired that we treat them as athletes first. Yes. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it, it's, you know, there's sincerity in being inspired by their achievements and the things that they do and their journeys to get to where they are. But for them, and it's wild to think, it's just normal. That's what they do. That's what they have to do. This is what they've chosen to do. So they're inspired that we start to understand that part of it, you know, rather than just sitting back and going, wow, I can't believe that that person was able to do that with that disability, you know? So that's super cool. Like what you just yeah. said, Lisa, you know, that athlete that you're participating alongside is equally inspired by you, which is what we, what we want. Right. And that's how we move this all forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, yeah you'll, you'll have to have. Well, ha Lisa and I will have to make a trip and come get some lessons on strongman. Um, <laughs> strongman, we should do that. Yeah, yeah and you can teach us some technique. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah we've got some pretty yeah. interesting trainers up here, uh, and Magnus will be spending a lot more time in Canada as we as we move forward too. So there's nothing like being trained by that guy. It's just. <laughs>
I'll, I'll give you a story. So Martins Leeches, he's a 2019 World's Strongest Man, and he won the Arnolds this year. Um, in 2020, Magnus was an MC. He wasn't the ref, so he was emceeing. And so it was a bag over the bar. So you swing it and you throw the bag over the bar. Ridiculous weights, like 80 pounds, 90 pounds, 100 pounds. Well, Martins just made it. So after that, he came over to Magnus, who's on camera, and starts asking him questions. And, and this is, a, he was the reigning world's strongest man at the time, won lots of competitions. And he starts asking him how to improve his technique for the next throw. So there they are. Magnus puts down his mic. He's supposed to be talking. I'm like, Magnus, no. <laughs> and he starts showing Martins, and they're talking. And then Martins goes, sits down, comes up to the next, his next turn, and way over the bar comes running over and grabs Magnus and it's a big hug. And it's just like, so cool. It's so cool. You know? So that's, again, that's some of the essence of the sport, but if you get an opportunity to come up here and if Magnus is here, it's, it's awesome. I think we definitely have to do that. Yeah, that I, cool. I would love, love to see the competition and, yeah. you know, um, I think Sheila and I will plan a road trip. Yeah. Yep. That hey, would be fun. June, Send June us 17th today. to the 19th. Okay. You can come up on the 15th. That's my birthday. I think I'm 35. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we can go out to O'Reilly's and win the prize. <laughs> Perfect. I like O'Reilly. I don't even have to do that because I have a bar at the other place. <laughs> that's right. Yes, yeah, we can go there. Bar get us there. So. We can do a workout and have Guinness after. That's right. Back uh, to the... maybe, maybe blow off the workout. <laughs> have a yeah. It is fitness beer. <laughs> it is fitness, fitness beer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a recovery. It's 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 a recovery drink, right? Yeah. After you yeah. do workout, beer, the recovery drink. You don't have to sell Tony on it, Sheila. <laughs> Sheila, you you recover the. I'm night trying to sell myself. Recover after. <laughs> well, I could do that, right? <laughs> that goes back to our tough mutter days of training and finishing yeah. it off with nachos and Guinness. Nachos, it's the way to do it. Yeah. So, yeah. so I even have Magnus drinking Guinness now. He. Uh, during the world, the record breakers, I was standing over um, close to the arena and uh, he comes over, puts his hand over the mic. He says, I can't wait to have a cold pint of Guinness. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I told you the story about when we were in Ireland and he and he didn't want the Guinness. Yeah. So that's a big change. Yeah. Big change. How do you go to Ireland and not have a Guinness? Oh, Sheila, I'm going to tell you the story. because. <laughs> <it's> <laughs> so we, we have this wonderful guy named Richard Looney. If you get a chance, look him up. He's just an absolute craftsman. He's a, uh, he's an Irishman over six feet tall. <laughs> oh, wow. He's, wow, he's there six, you go. <laughs> six foot three. Wow. And uh, he crafted all our logs and our yoke and just beautiful work, just an artisan. And he does it by hand. So he made, he made these logs um, for Magnus and for our competition. We were over in Ireland um, you know, this time last year, February of, of 2021 and uh, went to go visit him and he had these logs and he hadn't met Magnus, you know, just in passing, but they contacted each other and he's putting these logs together. So it was total fanboy. We went to Richard's gym and all his people and everybody's getting their photos with Magnus and whatever he could do for Magnus. And it was fantastic, really fanboy. So he wanted to take us out into, he lives in Carlo. He wanted to take us out to a pub and buy us dinner. So uh, it was me, Walker, Magnus, Richard, and a friend of Richard's. We sit down. The lovely waitress comes up to the, the table, and she says, would you like a drink? And Richard says, Guinness, 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 Guinness. And Magnus goes, no, 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 no. I'll have a lager. And Richard switches from fanboy to Irish. He goes, lager? You'll not be having a lager. Lager's for fairies. <laughs> 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 which was really funny he just instantly when you start talking about guinness and irish that was it <laughs> yeah done. So, you have so, to have it that's funny have to have guinness, yeah. So, yeah guinness for strength but anyway he likes it now yeah he likes it now now he likes it now now yeah. you know what it's like <laughs> i i bother people long enough and eventually oh Shut the hell up, Tony. <laughs> fine, I'll just have it. Yeah, fine. That's it. Sheila. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> beer pressure. There's <laughs> much beer pressure. That's yeah. right. <laughs> well, well this lovely. I've really enjoyed meeting you. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to um actually looking up 
all the things that we talked about today, and especially, um, you know, and, and watching the strongman competitions and promoting yeah. your events to others. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank and you for Lisa that. and I to come up and be taught a lesson. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Okay. If you get a chance, you know, just to, you can go on the Rogue website and they have a page for our event, the Magnus Classic, okay. and you can go through some of the, some of the events. It's really cool to watch. It's really, really cool to watch. Okay. We will check that out and uh, we would love to have you back again. Okay. You I'd know, love to come back. <laughs> maybe a bit of a regular, you know, uh -oh. <laughs> follow some of these stories and yeah. events and yeah. uh, that'd be awesome. You know, it's such a powerful um, thing that, that, that you're doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think Sheila and I would love to continue to share it. Um, yeah. Absolutely. With as well. Yeah. Absolutely. We can have you come up here and you can do your podcast from our new studio. Yeah. Oh, that would be really fun. Yeah. 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 I'd love that. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's do that. Yeah. Okay. Let's Absolutely. do it. Absolutely. Okay. It's, awesome. it's a date. We're set. All right. Okay. Thanks <laughs> so much. We even have a house today. now, too, Lisa. Yeah. So what? We even have a house now. So we're good yes. to go. Oh. <laughs> yeah. They've had a journey with that as well. Oh, but. Okay. Pandemic. Some smart ass. Sheila, some guy who thought he was so smart, sold the house just at the beginning of the pandemic. And we managed to buy a lot. You know, we secured this lot because everybody was sort of afraid. This lake lot, and we were going to build the house. It's going to be fantastic. I had it all up here. So we bought a trailer for the summer, and we were living on the, on the lake on a friend of ours lot. It was beautiful. Yeah. It's just like a vacation all summer long. Gym was closed, so it was kind of fun. Down by the dock every day. <laughs> and, um well, didn't the pandemic go on and on yeah. and on? So we were two years. We finally we finally got into the house in January. Finally oh my goodness, that's yeah. such a long time. Oh yeah, but oh well. Well, congratulations, you're in a yeah. home. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. 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 In a beautiful no, spot. Yeah. yeah. Can't wait yeah. to see it. Yeah. It's 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 pretty neat little place, condo by the lake. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Perfect. Beautiful. Okay. Well, this was great. Thanks for yeah, watching. That was great. Thank you. Yeah, it was yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll uh, we'll check out some of these links, and uh, we'll be planning our road trip, and uh, we'll stay connected. You got to come up. You, I you'll will. love it. We will. You we know will. what? We uh, definitely outside, will. Outside of the the after parties and the Guinness and everything, <laughs> uh, the events are just it's amazing to watch. It's it's so exciting to be there, whether it's the able bodied or the disabled. That's there's yeah. something about just genuine feats of strength, yeah. you know, um, that are exciting it's it's really kind of interesting to watch and be part of so. well i'm always up for some inspiration so me too awesome. awesome we need a lot more of that these days as well right no kidding yeah no kidding. Yes. <laughs> okay. okay well have a great day and All right. uh, yeah we'll talk yep. soon thank you Thanks so much me. we'll see you later Bye. okay cheers cheers This episode is being produced by the Ocean Junction Podcast Network. It's sponsored by OceanJunction.com. They have what you need for swimming in the pool, lake, and ocean.